relationship mechanic here on the relationship show. We are here still talking about here in April during the storm. And during the storm is some of the times that we feel defeated during the storm and some of the times we just give up. Um, last week we talked about being thrown overboard, so we don't want you to be the cause of your own defeat and get thrown overboard. But the key to this evening is we're talking about the storms that you have during your relationships. Um, and when I say relationships, we're talking about marriage because last week we was talking about your relationship with God, those storms that we sometimes create ourselves through disobedience. Mm -hmm. Now, this week we're talking about, we have our wonderful couple here. We have Apostle Kevin Whitaker and we have the woman of God, Pastor Dewana Whitaker with us. And it's nice to be in the middle of me and feel like you're being covered in the words, y'all know. <laughs> so it's, that, it's just that, that place where you feel safe at, you know. And that's what we're going to talk about, how you feel safe right in the middle of God's arms sometimes during that storm and what we listened to before we came in and y'all know like how I like to minister it's in it's not always about the height it's about the lyrics of the song because I know y'all like to you know like we in worship service y'all want to get up and jump but sometimes we need to find a place in worship where we can be in a place of quietness with God and that song was from Lifehouse even the name of the group when I thought about Lifehouse it was just it almost makes me think about the lighthouse. And mm -hmm. so when you're talking about the lighthouse and the lighthouse during the storm, it's what you're looking for in during the storm so you can find the shore so you don't feel like you'll never get back to shore again. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about this, I do want you all to go back and listen to the song because I know we are here in different places and sometimes you might not capture the music. So go back and definitely hear the song so you understand the lyrics. But behoove me not, I want to get to the lyrics because there are some words that have to be said tonight. Um from our guests, so I don't want us to go too slow because I want to make sure I get everything they need to say tonight because we're talking about do, during the storm, we're going to talk about being too hard to break. We're going to talk about... Um, some of the warfare that you need to have and be prepared in your relationship. So tonight we got a lot of things to cover, okay. a lot of things that I want to bless you all listeners with tonight. I say when you have the double duo in the house, you definitely take advantage of it when you have a man and a woman of God to deliver a word for us tonight. But as always, let's start off with our foundational scripture, Matthew 7, 24. Four through seven, and this is actually being spoken through Jesus. So that means it's not about what the people were singing in the Bible. This is what about what Jesus was singing during the Bible. And if you all remember, he spoke in parables. So I'm gonna break it down through what I heard when I read it, because I'm not a theologian. I'm gonna tell y'all what I heard, what I read, it, how it fit tonight for me. Mm -hmm. So Matthew 7, 24 through 7, it says, Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these things of mine and doeth them not shall be likened to a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. The key is the rain is going to come. The rain is going to come whether you choose to build your life on a rock or you choose to build it on sand. The rain is going to come. That was my interpretation because it said it rained in both situations. Mm -hmm. So the rain is going to come. But now we choose in life what is our foundation and it's, a, it's kind of funny, um, the Bible that I'm reading from, you all know how they have those wonderful headers to tell you how that story fits into the Bible. And it was the danger of profession without faith. And, mm -hmm. and what happens a lot of times within our lives, we profess the things that we know God, we profess the word of God, but we don't even have faith and believe in the words that we mm -hmm. speak. And that is building our lives on sand because there is no strength, there is no rootedness in what we speak and that's why the storm came it came to test what your lip service and a lot of us got really great lip service and the thing is we don't want to be about lip service we want to be about reality service and that's why i am trying to prepare everybody in this life not when the storm comes you know because it's gonna come mm -hmm. so everybody needs a preparation in their marriages because i believe that people think of the fairy tale world that we live in <laughs> and a storm is not gonna come but the thing is they did not make preparation for that storm that's the difference 
a lot of times we think about um, a storm, we think about umbrellas, we think about boots, we think about mm-hmm. jackets. But when a storm comes, y'all mm-hmm. forget about the rain, you forget about the lightning. All that little bit of frivolous stuff that you put on is not the ultimate protection that you really need. Amen. That's why you have to have that rock. You have to have that covering of God that you have to have. So... Saying all that, because I'm, you know, y'all can tell I'm just a little bit excited tonight. <laughs> uh, so, it's okay. that's all right. That's so, all right. but the thing is, I got some songs. Y'all know I love my songs and I picked them out. I even picked them out early, so y'all be proud of me. I listen to songs really early this time. <laughs> And it's called Till the Storm Passes By. And that's what we need to understand. During the storm, we are in a waiting period. We have to do mm-hmm. something while we're waiting for the storm to pass by. And it's not balling up. And just mm-hmm. curling up and waiting for it to go. That song is by Linda Randall. And then there's talking about a healing rain by Michael W. Smith. All rain ain't bad. Mm-hmm. And I did say it ain't. I know that's real, real bad. That's so right. we ain't sometimes just to get down to the southern root of the things. Right. But all rain ain't bad. Because the thing is, it is healing. There's some healing and some cleansing and some newness and some freshness. So some storms come in your life to shake up, to wash out some mess that you got to, mm-hmm. you know, get your soil water so some real things can grow. Because, you know, some of us got some weeds growing up out in our yard. We need that rain to dig them up, wash them away so that the seeds that God really want to plant into our life grows. So Accept the rain into your life is sometimes the growth and the freshness that God's want to bring in. And then you got to be willing to let go of it so you don't get wiped away with it. Sometimes wow. during that rain and storm right. in our life, we holding on to something so tight mm-hmm. that when the rain comes, we think it's God sent it to wash us away. No, he sent it so it could clean you and let some of that stuff go. So saying all of that, tonight I want you all to understand. I want you all to get to the mindset. I want you to be too hard. To break. That's what we're talking about tonight. I want you to get to the place where you're going to be too hard to break. I didn't say where you're unbendable. Now, because you will break. I don't want you to be unbendable. I don't want you to be unflexible. But I want you to get to a place where no matter what God sends you through in your relationship, you get to a place where you're fortified. No matter what comes during that storm, you're too hard to break. So y'all just remember that hashtag and talk about it too hard to break. And we're going to move into our songs. And then when we come back, we're going to hear from Pastor Dewana and Apostle Kevin. And we are going to be blessed this evening. Amen.
you all. And um, the thing is, I don't think we ever um went on live. <laughs> we oh, still right, been alive, right? right. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the thing is, we are enjoying each other's company in here, and hope that you are enjoying listening. Um, if you were not able to hear the music, I definitely want you to go back and listen to the lyrics of "Till the Storm Passes By" and definitely "Healing Rain." They'll be posted so you can go back and view these songs later. Because the lyrics are just as important as the music and where it takes you. A lot of times we get caught up in the beat of things, and I don't want people to do that. Um, tonight, as I promised you all, we were going to talk about Too Hard to Break. And now, I thought this was just too awesome. I got me an uh, e-book where you can actually flip through it, and I can be fast. Y'all just don't know how I like, I'm like a speed kind of reader. So this is right up my alley because I don't have to sit here and flip pages and pause for you all. So I get to just whoop, whoop and get to where we want to talk about it tonight. So I told you all, and I promise you all, we were going to talk about Too Hard to Break. It is a book, but the thing is, it's about more than a book. It is about a lifestyle and a place that you choose to be in God. So realize a lot of times books, sometimes they're fictional. They don't have a place. And I know this was written by you, Apostle. So mm -hmm. we're going to first start off with a little background history of okay. how did that title come about? And oh, do wow. you see yourself as too hard to break? Well, uh, the title is actually a song that I wrote years ago. Okay. Um, I used to be in the music industry. Okay. And um, I was in a rap group. And, you know, we were kind of on the track to really doing some big things. We've done some big shows with some big artists, Ice Cube, B.I.G., you name it, we did it. Um, and at that point in my life, there was a lot of things going on. I grew up in the hood, and I was uh, a, a product of my environment, if you can put it that way. And so, you know, during that that run in the music industry uh, to make a long story less long the Lord called me into ministry Okay. so when he called me into ministry I had to pull back from the things that I was doing and uh, several years later fast forward uh, my friend uh, Glenn Murray who wrote, wrote the forward to that book who is also the CEO of the publishing company 220 220 Publishing shout out to 220 Publishing um <laughs> Um, he said, man, I think you should tell your story. My story is, is uh, very interesting. Um, at one time in my life, I was facing 20 years in jail. And, and throughout that whole process, God did some miraculous things to literally turn my life around in such a way that it even baffles me today when I really think about uh, what it is that he has done. And so I began to, you know, write the book. He, he came up with the title. He said, I think you should use a song that we did many years ago because that details my life. Every aspect of my life, everything that I've been through, ultimately, it reveals that I am too hard to break. Okay. And and what I liked is it tied back to your past mm -hmm. because it, it gave us a journey and a glimpse into the used to be. And I think a lot of times when people um, are called, mm -hmm. they don't want to expose the past, right. which is the foundation of how they became who they were. Um, we like to talk about yeah, we say God found us. We leave it there, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. we don't want to nobody, nobody know or dig a little deeper <laughs> right. or tell that little story, you know, because we want that next generation to see us as a perfected in the Lord, not realizing a perfection has not come yet. Right. We're still being perfected. And the key kind of in that story is... You tell you took a three hundred. Well, you took a one eighty because we because we don't want you to turn three sixty because then you'll go back to where right you came where from. You so in that one eighty, God put you through a storm. But the mm -hmm. th the key is you didn't panic when you said you were facing those twenty years. You saw it in front of you, but it's you saw it in front of you. And the thing is, a lot of times when we see things in front of us, even sometimes God just giving us a glimpse of what could have happened. Mm -hmm. If you can't do what I asked you to do. But the thing is, we get co so consumed with the glimpse mm -hmm. that we actually miss our actual real future 
because we end up panicking and end up getting drugged back to where it was God mm -hmm. was trying to bring us from. Right. It's that rain, that fresh rain that God brought in. He, he put you through a storm to turn that boat around. And so we get to that turnaround boat, and that's how we get here to a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> So now that we are on this ship together, right? You know the 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 key is now when you all got on the ship together, Pastor. Mm -hmm. How was the seas for your relationship then? Uh, well, you know, as in all relationships, you have your ups and you have your downs. But the key is uh, to stay steadfast and keep God in the middle. Uh, we we pray daily, even when we were a young couple. We're not as young as we used to be. <laughs> <laughs> Been together for a while now going through the storms, but God saw us through. Uh, we prayed together, uh, stayed together, and just saw, just allowed God to kind of maneuver us through the storms. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we, we just held on, kept, kept on pressing, kept on praying, kept on praising, kept worshiping together, and we just think that's the key. If you keep God in the middle, then when you look back, you don't have any distractions. Nothing can stop you. Uh, nothing can block you. The enemy might try, but when you hold hands together and you're together in that thing, you know that through it all, you're going you're gonna to be able to endure it and get through it. Okay, so now when you all got on that ship together, were you already pastor and were you already apostle? No. no. <laughs> okay. I was in ministry. I had been in ministry for about three years uh, when we met, and um, <clears throat> and um, when we when we came together, um, just just quite frankly, my life was uh, very much uh, in shambles. Um, I I got kicked out of school in the twelfth grade, um, so I never went back to school to finish to get anything until I met my wife. And I met my wife, she was a nurse, she was doing well, and um, she simply said uh, to me one day, you didn't finish school. <laughs> and I was like, well, I got kicked out. She was like, oh, that's not good enough. So I went, took tests, got my, got my GED, and then she took me down to a college and went in and convinced those people to let me in school <laughs> Because I needed a degree. That's right. And uh, we sit there, and we weren't even married at the time, you know, but she was helping to build me mm -hmm. and, and restore my confidence just in myself and in life. Because I've always been smart, but um, made a lot of stupid decisions, made a lot of stupid choices. And so, <clears throat> and so during that time, um, you know, I, I got in school and, you know, I, I was working. I already had a job, I was working a lot of hours. A uh, pretty decent job, and um, and um, she just kind of walked with me through that and through that process. Uh, we got married, and and uh, we've been together going on now uh, eighteen years. Married going on seventeen. All right. And, and I, that was the t part of the story I wanted people to hear, because I think when people will hear the story, they always hear, you know, two good Christian people already came together. They already had it together. Mm -mm. And, and that, you know, <laughs> and I think that's where we get confused. The thing is that God did has, have his hands already on you all. That That's the key, though, that you do have to allow God into your relationship. Right. Right. But also in that, you weren't trying to force him to get better because he was your husband. Right. You were trying to help him see that there's a better way because just life is better. Right. And and the thing is, I think a lot of times that it, that's that's a confusing thing because people get confused. I'm trying to help you, not hold you back or not hold you down or mm -hmm. not trying to make you better. Or judge you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right. Is is that is that kind of point in a in the boat? When we're not necessarily tied together, we hadn't right. been yoked, we're not in the covenant, but we're in a boat with a lot of people in this world. But mm -hmm. we're so afraid if we help them, they're going to rise up on the level on the boat a little bit above us. But the thing mm. is, I want everybody on the boat to know how to swim. Right. I want everybody on the boat to you know, be That's able right. to sustain themselves. Because at the end of the day, I can't swim you and me, so I need you to be able to swim, <laughs> swim for yourself. For so that's the thing in that boat relationship we have to understand. Because during the storm, you got a lot of people you done held back because you didn't want to learn how to swim. Mm -hmm. You know, now you got a whole bunch of people going to drown. But the thing is, these might be the people that you need to stay on the boat who going to feed you, who going to keep the boat running. And That's you right. were so afraid. That's right. 
to teach something. So we have to have not that fear that we're bringing each other up and connecting. It's that partnership right. that you all were building. That it's that foundership. Right. It's that help. It's that growth together that you all already had set up out mm -hmm. there. And so that way when the boat started moving, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it, it made an easier transition because you all had already built that trust in each other That's that right. I know you got my best interest at heart. Right. That's right. I know you're speaking to me out of a place of love. It's not a place that you've belittled me, you put me down, mm -hmm. you've, you've kept a record of my past, what, mm -hmm. what, what they say, because you had already been through enough that you already knew the streets. Right. You already knew you could survive. You right. already knew how to do the hustle. You already right. knew how to make it. But now you needed to understand that there was love on the other side right. that wasn't the hard street love. Right. Now, what got me right here at the beginning of the the beginning, the beginning of the book, so I'm not going to read y'all the book because I want y'all to go get the book now. So that okay. wouldn't even be right if I sit here and read the whole book to you. <laughs> I had to read pretty fast, though, to read the whole book to you. But right here when it begins, of course, it begins us in Genesis. But uh, y'all have to read a little bit of the forward that is not going to all come from this religiousosity place. And I want to mm -hmm. say religiosity because we've made it where it comes from this high level. When we hear a pastor write something to speak something, we feel like it's just another Bible that they're trying to read. Right. This is a real raw edition. So... If you, it's, a real, knew, it's a real book. That's what I'm saying. So it's I the real raw really edition now because he already told you he came from the perspective of where he came from. So y'all already know. It says it's from the Chicago street. So now y'all yeah. y'all realize. So that's right now. Southside. Just just realize this. <laughs> <laughs> but starting off, it says here, the Genesis, where it talks about the beginning. It says, late one night while it's raining and thundering. Y'all know that ain't nothing but God. We're going we going through this storm, y'all, where it's raining and thundering. I am chilling by myself and thinking to God, just wondering, please, oh, Lord, can you help me? Tired of these real crooked cops trying to get me. And see, that's um, <laughs> lyrics from a song called Ghetto Heat, y'all. Yeah, I know a little about rap. No, uh, I ain't quite as old as y'all think. But, you know, I, when, when, the, when the song, when I saw that, I was like, okay, you know, you talk about the storm, you talk about the streets, mm -hmm. you talk about the crookedness, it's talk about the place that you need to get away from. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in the storm, how it says, you got to find that lighthouse. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to find that place where you can look toward so your focus don't become about all uh, the barrage and all, everything that comes on the boat. Like, right. And I like what you said about the distractions. Mm -hmm. So as a, um, as a wife, as a woman of God, along these 18 years, tell me how do you kind of block out some of those distractions, put those blinders on, and keep that focus? I, I balance myself, uh, whether it be uh, uh, with ministry, with, with work, children, uh, we have a full plate. And, a real full plate. Uh, yes, as a woman of God, <laughs> I, uh, I pray. I pray, I stay focused, I press, and I target whatever my goal is, whatever we're trying to do. Uh, I target and I speak success upon our lives. I speak victory upon the house. Uh, that's what a virtuous woman does. She has to pray for her husband, pray for her children, pray for her home daily. And the Bible says, uh, press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. So I pray. I decree daily, and they know, if you know me, you're going to know I'm going to decree. <laughs> Watch me if overcome. If she don't do nothing else, she's going to decree. <laughs> I'm going to say I am the head <laughs> and not the tail. I pray and decree daily. That That's what kind of motivates me and keeps me encouraged. I talk to myself, even have to look in that mirror, call my best friend on the phone, talk to my husband on the way home from work. That's how I stay balanced. And I think that's how any woman, uh, whether she's in ministry or not, but if she has a heavy plate, I think that balance is necessary, especially with children, work. You have a lot on your mind, a lot on your plate. You, you encourage others, but who's going to pour into you? But you keep yourself motivated by decreeing and praying daily. That's how I stay focused. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm going I'm to take you off a little line now. Okay. And the reason why I say that, because everybody ain't made it there yet. Right. You, sure right. you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and, and I say that, I mean, because I'm going to just be honest. Everybody, right, right, everybody right. ain't made it there yet. Right, and right. I mean, I mean, don't don't get me wrong. I get up right, and right. with I got a, I got a schedule. <laughs> I always tell my husband, I, I believe in a schedule. If it's not on the right. schedule, it's not going to happen. I'm, you know. Mm -hmm. That's how she, she yeah, writes yeah, everything I'm, down. And I, I think that's, we are, we are a calendaring people. We've been right. created as women. We're, we're very calendar like, very organized mm -hmm. from a place, especially, like you say, when you're maneuvering a lot of different things. Right. Um, 
But what I don't want people to do is get scared off right. by um because balance is a scary word for people when it they hear be. hear balance. What what I, what I want you all to um kind of you know skew that word with is okay. kind of say prioritize prioritize because right. okay. see I, I I'm I'm through with juggling I, I don't right. do acts no more I don't <laughs> right. get in the circus I ain't trying right. to impress them. all I do is priority what's on my plate is my priority right so right. um and the thing is sometimes you have to realize everything mm -hmm. on your plate you mm -hmm. don't necessarily have to have Handle, you can That's divvy right. it up to some other people. Exactly. I'd be Don't like, get... do you need a little bit to eat today? Mm -hmm. right. Do Absolutely. you need a little bit to eat <laughs> right. today? So everybody get a little eat off this plate That's today. Right. That means somebody got everybody got to do a little work, and that's just the ease out there for some of the people that's mm -hmm. listening. Because a lot of times, mm -hmm. you know, when you say I'm gonna carry it all as a woman, that that sounds great. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be everything. I'm gonna be everybody. Let's let's that can become something that can actually tear mm -hmm. the ship apart. Mm -hmm. Cause you're going to go down in the bowels and act a fool and that's just turn some stuff off. <laughs> if you haven't made it to that place right. mm -hmm. of encouragement and you don't have like that circle of people right. around you. Yeah. It's a daily press. It's a daily yeah, press. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. So the mm -hmm. thing is, I want to encourage people to find right. that mm -hmm. the people on their ship, right. find the people that's on your ship. Mm -hmm. Like you, like you have, if, if you haven't made it to a place where you can encourage yourself yet, right. you need to make it to a place where you can find that encouraging crew that can come right. around exactly. you. To pray for you. That's yeah. Right. Right. So you. now, how do you make sure that your wife has that encouraging crew around her so that she don't freak out in the bowels and tear the ship up? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think I think you know my job mm -hmm. as her husband is to cover her, of course, to mm -hmm. to protect her, to provide some sort of of guidance. If you will, and if I believe, and she she'll tell you this, if I believe that she's taking on too much, then I'll let her know that you know you you don't have to do this, you don't have to do this or this, mm -hmm. you know, to to kind of cause her to to calm it down a little bit and just kind of gather herself and focus on things that are a lot less stressful. So I cover her in that way. I make sure that that she doesn't overwork. Uh, you know, that I don't let the children get the best of her when I'm, when I'm around, when I'm in town, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, uh, and I try to, uh, carry my load, okay. you, you know, as, as a husband, as a father, mm -hmm. you know, as her friend, right. you know, because we are, we are really good friends. We, yes. we, you know, we talk, we joke, we play, you know, and, and all of that. So I try to just make sure that, that as her husband, I do the very best I can do in her life so that she doesn't feel like she's in it by herself or trying to do everything by herself for herself. Okay. I, I, I do like that, what you see is, first of all, carrying your load. Mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of times on the... um. And I'm not saying this is against any husband, any man, any woman. The key is everybody has to know they have a load. Mm -hmm. It's not a it's not a prescribed load, you know, because everybody has got to this point, you know, about this whole breadwinner thing, who makes the most, who is the provision. It's the load that you've prescribed for your ship. That's right. What what works for your ship in order to carry on? Because the thing is, if you're out there trying to duplicate other people's ship, you're gonna sink. That's true. So the thing is, whatever your load is and whatever you all have agreed to to keep this boat afloat. Mm -hmm. right. and, and I like that you say, okay, you don't have to do this, you don't have to do this, you don't have to do this. Because, I mean, I know. When I had little kids, Lord, thank you, Jesus. When I had little kids, I can say that. Woo! I can say, when I had little kids, you know, that that was, you know, you had that extra anxiety mm -hmm. of needing to do a little bit more and figuring out, okay, which of these things are really priority? And how am I signing them up for too much? Am I trying to, you know, mm -hmm. spread them and make them be everything or be everywhere? You know, mm -hmm. I know we are trying to make sure that they are well prepared as well. Mm -hmm. But like you say, you got to make sure, you know, you're saying, where are you supposed to be? Where are you not supposed to be in, in, in that process? Now, let's talk about life jackets. You know, when we're going through this this storm together. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I'm always partial. Let's do ladies first. So um, let's talk about times when you've had to, you know, life jacket yourself back on the boat or throw out a lifeline. So to make sure sometimes you just got to float. Sometime during the storm, you, you can't get out the boat and swim. Right. You just got to mm -hmm. deal with the waves. You got to deal with the thunder. What is it that you would advise women to do when you feel like the ship is sinking? Well, 
when I feel like uh, uh, I would advise when I feel like the ship is sinking uh, that women should just be steadfast Okay. Uh, uh, try not to, and, and it's going to happen because you're, you're human, but just try not to get down. Try not to be down on yourself. Uh, recognize, recognize and realize who you are and who, who you are and whose you are. Um, also, in God, where he's taking you, uh, who you are, you have to be confident as a woman. I think you have to know your self-worth. Uh, whatever you've been through, uh, whether it be abuse, any type of challenges in life, any types of uh, obstacles or hurdles, I think you have to find that inner self-worth. Uh, you have to find the, the, the she within yourself and know that, you know, I am the one I can, I can overcome. I can do all things through Christ, uh, which strengthens me. That's kind of like a life jacket, I think, uh, to kind of help help you get to the float to the to the place that where you need to be you know mm-hmm. when you can't do anything else sometimes you just gotta stay still stand still and float y'all mm-hmm. i like that stay still stand still and just <laughs> mm-hmm. but it, but it is it is it's a, it's a floating process mm-hmm. um because i think we try to swim through everything right. or we try to drag people mm-hmm. with us sometimes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and sometimes you just have to sit there and wait right. for your mate to catch up with you, or right. you have to catch up with them. Well, you know, it is. It's a. It's that. It's that wave. It's mm-hmm. that water. But it's the thing is, a lot of times we try to fight the waves. Right. You, I'll tell everybody, you can't outswim the waves. That's right. Too strong. Mm-hmm. They they too strong, and sometimes they too high. <laughs> They're right. going to take you under. So you exactly. have to put on the life jacket to That's say, right. okay, I'm gonna float this out with God. Mm-hmm. He That's is my right. life jacket. Gotcha. I'm gonna keep him here. Mm-hmm. So terms if y'all don't know what the life jacket is if y'all don't understand jesus if you hadn't got your life jacket of course we gonna offer you a life jacket this evening because i want everybody to have a life with a life jacket so i'm not gonna help them leave you without (laughs) offering you a life jacket jacket um so now in your case i'm Mm -hmm. gonna come to you with that same question about what is your life jacket because i i think people feel like men for some reason don't have emotional baggage or don't feel oh, like they in the way. It's a lot of yeah. people who just don't address, you know, the man side of the issue because they don't see you all right. in that way. They say, okay, women go through this emotional. Yeah, we might be a little bit emotional, but men go through those same Very ship much so. edges. So how do you deal with it? And I want you to tell the men, how can they address some of these emotions that they are actually causing the waves in their own relationship because they don't vent them out? Let me let me start from <laughs> from a societal standpoint. Yeah. One of the things I think that <clears throat> has messed men up is society and how they they told us as little boys when you fall, get up from there. Uh, men don't cry, you know, suck it up. All of these things I think throughout the, the course of time really messed up. Be a man, be a man. Yeah, you know, <laughs> try to for, you know, and and it and it and it puts something in in the mindset of men that they begin to internalize everything that they went through. Mm-hmm. So rather than rather than express it, they would internalize it, mm-hmm. and then they become dysfunctional mm-hmm. because they explode and overcompensate with their emotions yes. at the wrong time. Right. And so, so I think that's the that's the first issue. Um, but but secondly, um, having a relationship with God has been portrayed as a feminine thing. Mm. So you don't see men really worship the way that they should. And as a result of that, the relationship with God is not the way that it should be. As a result of that, men then think that they are 100% responsible for themselves. When you that, And that's how you lose it. That's how you lose it. We have to understand that we belong to God. Mm -hmm. And so as God's children, we are responsible to obey his word. God is responsible for his children. Okay. So as a man, you know, at even those times when, when it gets heavy and it does get heavy, because there's no way that a real man, quote unquote, real man, uh, that, that cares about his wife, cares about his children and their well-being, um, there's no way that he won't have moments of heaviness. Mm-hmm. It's just impossible, you know. And I tell people all the time, you know, wherever there's human effort, there's going to be human error. Mm-hmm. So as a man, as the head of the house, you are uh, responsible for making a lot of decisions. And then some of those decisions that, you know, that you can't make. I, I t- talk to my wife because I realize that my wife hears from God as well. 
She has a relationship with God as well. So sometimes, rather than just try to figure it all out myself, I'll say, hey, baby, let's let's talk. I need to know what you think because this is what I think. Mm -hmm. And I need to know what you think just in case what I'm thinking right. is not the right way, you know. And so, and so there are times when I personally believe that men should should go to their wives. And and I often tell, I, I, I've said this so many times throughout the years when we would have men meetings with, with the men in the church and, mm -hmm. and my wife and I counsel a lot of pastors and their wives. We've done that for years. Mm -hmm. And I, I always tell them a lot of times when God really want to get a word to a man, he'll use his wife to get it to him. Okay. And you know what? I I, I love that because at first I was like, Is you gonna, are you going to answer my question? But you got me. You got I was me. trying to take the long way home. Bro. I know, I don't. You know what? I've realized through my husband, y'all like y'all have to take the story adventure. Yeah. Y'all just can't never give me the black and white version. Well, I mean, I want the color up a little bit. I know y'all got to, um, so y'all try to lose us so we don't remember no, what the question no, no, no. was. I'm with you. That, 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 that's what happens sometimes. Y'all just, we like, what? But I'm going to remind y'all what I asked, what the life jacket was. But and I believe the answer was sometimes the life jacket is being able to be quiet and listen to your wife pull Absolutely. you back in yeah. through God's I, I word. Really believe See, it. I told you I was listening to that story. I, I but really but, the, but the, the thing is, I do believe what you said is a societal thing. I'm the man. I'm the head. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm the Absolutely. captain of this ship. Absolutely. And we forget. That you ain't captain nothing. You just a rider with God just like everybody else. And God gave you a you, help me. That's right. right. But you better get back in your cabin because mm -hmm. you're not the captain of the ship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's right. You okay. get in your cabin. He's in control. That's right. You, that's you, right. you, you the right. head in your cabin that God assigns you a room on his ship. And and that and that's the key is to go back to your cabin. Y'all have a dialogue together and say, "Hey, God, this is what we want to do on your ship," mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because this is what we heard you say, and that will keep your ship from getting torn up. Because, as the word says, the wind, the rain, and the storms will come. They are coming. They will come. I so, don't care how much uh, but, in love you are. Yeah. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care how much storms are coming. Yeah, the storms are come for everybody on social media who perfects their per perfect relationship, and that's that's because that's what they show you. That's the image that they believe. Okay, nobody's relationship is perfect. Amen. I mean, I love my husband, and we are not perfect. I'm gonna tell you that. He mm -hmm. probably gonna give a amen from y'all. Know he always had on the other side of the <laughs> other, other wall. But the thing is, what we've learned is how to um, maneuver in the storm. That's right. That's right. Sometimes we just lay out on the um, balcony and get wet. Because mm -hmm. we like, okay, this is all we can do is just get wet today. That's it. That's all we can do. We can let God <laughs> put a little washing on us. When the sun come out, we're going to be good again. But Absolutely. today, all we can do is get wet in this. That's it. So it's no need to hide because the waves going to come up on the boat, and we're going to feel it. We're going to feel what we go through. But the beauty of while it's raining, you know what you can do? You can cry. Won't nobody even know. Won't nobody even know. <laughs> you can holler while it's thundering and lightning that and is, won't nobody even know. That is absolutely true. That, that, that's the beauty of it, that you can go through. And sometimes the storm is just your covering mm -hmm. for God to let you just do whatever it is yeah. you need to do. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think a lot of times, even through our storms, we become so afraid to even let it out mm -hmm. that we bottled up all of this. Mm -hmm. Then when it gets sunny, we spend all our time complaining about what happened during the storm. Mm -hmm. So now that gets me back to too hard to break. Now that you didn't break, mm -hmm. tell us. What happened that told you I need to be flexible in this process? Not I need to be hard, get a hard heart. Right. Not that I need to be hard that I can't hear or be obedient to God. Mm -hmm. But what allowed you to bend and be flexible enough in that process to still hear God while you were out in the street doing something? What allowed you? Where were you? I think, I think first thing I would attribute that to is I was raised right. Okay. okay. Say, as, as a child is raised, you'll soon go back. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I believe that. I was raised right. I, you know, I tell people all the time, you know, uh, my parents raised me right, and I was raised in the admonition of the Lord. I went to church. Uh, I've been everything in church from a junior usher all the way up to where I am now. And and so so I was raised right. And so when, when things began to go uh, haywire for me and, 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 and things just got out of control in my life. I knew 
where to run to. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't fully understand all that was taking place. I didn't fully understand all that God was doing, but I knew that if I just went back to the house of God, mm -hmm. that somehow things would turn out right. And so that was that was that was ultimately what what really kept me. That was ultimately and and I just I can't uh, you know my wife when that at that particular time when she came into my life, you know I was in ministry. I really I wasn't looking for a wife, but when I saw her, I knew that she was my wife, and that that helped me. Um, I was a father, you know that that you know. Uh, was something that really helped me because I knew that not only was I responsible for myself, but I was responsible. I have five daughters. Okay. Okay. I have five daughters. God's uh, grace. Yeah. How yeah, about that? Yeah. So I, I knew that that I needed to be a better example of of a man so that my daughters wouldn't marry the kind of guy that I used to be. Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, I I do the the flexibility in that um because I want people to understand when you say too hard to break and especially from a male's perspective you know when people think about hard they think about macho they think about street they think about mm -hmm. you know nobody going to disrespect me nobody going to dish me but there's a point like you say you had to realize there was more at stake that's right than the i so when you're on that boat and in those waves it's more at stake it's more at stake right. than just saying, I'm going to jump off this boat and I'm going to swim to myself to safety because mm -hmm. you got other people on this boat that you were responsible for now. So mm -hmm. it's got to be more than feeling like, you know, this street life. Mm -hmm. But the key is to all of that is you were raised right. There mm -hmm. was a rearing. There was a hearing. There was a seed that was planted somewhere in your heart that was already there growing. So that... Happened that was real important. Well, we got some extra background music going on, y'all, but y'all bear with us. Y'all know we can we, we live, so we just work with it. But the, the key is, you know, that's just the distraction as always. As we talked about those distractions on the boat. Yeah, we, we not going to get so keyed up in that. Because the thing is, I want you all, as I promised, we're going we gonna to give y'all a moment. And, I mean, we got two minutes. A man and a woman of God, so I want them to give you that invitation. And I think a lot of people get confused that the invitation is to walk into a church, an edifice. The mm -hmm. invitation is allowed to God to walk in your heart. Yeah. So, so, yeah, I mean, I know I could do that, but that's that's, that's not my calling. So <laughs> I, 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 I always step back when a, a man and a woman of God are here. So whichever you all choose to want to make the offering for them to walk into the heart, I'll, I'll do it. Okay. Well, first thing I, I want to say to to anybody that's listening, anybody that's watching, um, even though I was raised in church, if you were not raised okay, in amen. church, yes, 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 that amen. does not matter at this particular point because you know you can still come to God. Mm -hmm. right. You know, and the Bible said that if you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, then you can be saved. That 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 God will come into your heart. He'll come into your life. And so I just say at this particular time, you know, uh, give God a chance yes. to make your life better. Give God an opportunity uh, to make your life better. Give give God that what what you have given everything else. Mm -hmm. You know, you know. A lot of times in life, we we give everything an opportunity. Right. We look. We look for peace, and sometimes they look for it in men. Sometimes men look for it in women. Sometimes they look for peace in alcohol. Sometimes we look for it in drugs. Amen. Sometimes we, we look for it in, in all types of relationships. We look for it in work. We look for it. We look, but I'm saying to you, give God a chance. Give him that same chance that you have given everything else that perhaps has not worked. And once you give it to God, Amen. Everything else will begin to fall in place. Amen. And if I may interject, I do want to piggyback on what my husband said. It, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you've done. Don't Amen. even look at the fact that you know.
know, I did such and such. God is not going to forgive me. He's He's a forgiving He's a forgiving and loving God. Amen. And what you have to do is just totally surrender, totally let go, forgive yourself, and just let go and let God lead you. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Don't think about. Don't look back. Uh, just keep pressing forward, and God can bless you. He can use you. He will use you. You have a ministry down on the inside. God's will can be Amen. done through you. And, and see, y'all y'all know this one, but God's divine purpose. That leads us into our last song, and it is by Divine. It's the, <laughs> Amen. A, a new artist. As, as here on 108 Praise, we are voicing the gospel, and a part of voicing the gospel is um, giving out a platform for new artists to come in wow. to actually um, showcase their songs and continue to praise God. Because there's a lot of people out there praising God. So we want to showcase that there is a voice beyond just the regular people, you know. So it's everybody's trying to make it. Everybody's trying to uplift God. So it's one voice that we're out, as long as it's God's voice, and it's about give it to Jesus. And see, that's right where we are now. We're talking about yes. because the door has been open the door has been open for you to actually clean your house throw Amen. stuff off your ship yes. and now allow God on your ship and make room so we're closing out we give it to Jesus and the thing is when we're talking about us giving back and growing here at the radio station one thing that we're doing is offering young people the opportunity to learn and grow with us and that's the internship program that we have and the plus we're actually out in the community giving back and donating and we're giving to the veterans and that's the people who fight for us when we not fight for ourselves so we can have that place of peace so you all need to go to the website look up the internships opportunities look up um the opportunity to give back in the community it's a dollar you can donate a dollar to give to veterans make your dollar count you know instead of the um coffee that you pay more than a dollar for i'm not gonna put nobody (laughs) out there that you know you go ahead and give that to a veteran today so we can give to the people who have been giving their life to us And to say that, we are closing out this evening with Give It to Jesus, but I want you to remember to stay in contact with me until next Tuesday. Always meet us at the Relationship Service Station. If not, I will see you here next Tuesday, same time, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. on 108 Praise, the Master Relationship Mechanic Show, and we are going to give it to Jesus.